Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to an Astro Chat episode. In this Astro Chat episode, I'm going to explore a question that has come from one of you. But before I do that, I just want to say that I'm recording this on the 12th of October and I realize that we are rapidly approaching a pretty intense eclipse that's going to happen on the 14th. I have talked about that. You can watch that in uh, me talking about the eclipses in the video above. I just want to say that if you are in a part of the world that is really challenged at the moment, and we've got several parts of the world right now that are just in chaos and meltdown and turmoil, I just wanted to say that I'm certainly doing extra prayer right now. Uh, I, I've got my mantra beads. I'm going to talk about this in a moment. So if you want to hear about what I do with these mantra beads, stick around. But what I want to say is that if you are in a difficult part of the world right now, be in the energy of prayer. Uh, prayer energy is a must for the month of October. And the other thing I want to say is that this video might just be a nice distraction for you. You can just come and hang out here and we're going to talk about prayer and we're going to talk about the concept of taking your power back. So this could be a nice bit of distraction for wherever you might be. Okay, so just be with us here in this calm little space. We're just going to talk about nice stuff and we're not going to get involved in the world or any of that. Um, as for prayer, one of you did ask me recently You'd asked me, I'd mentioned on one of my videos that I have been doing two lines from the Hanuman Chalisa and I do, you know, one, one set. So this is 108 beads here and I was doing one set um, of that. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll talk you through it. Um, but I was doing one set of that every day for 40 days. Now the two lines were Nase Roga Hare Sapira Japatanirantara Hanumatabira. So I do that. Now I use these two fingers here and I just hold each bead and close my eyes and And what I've found is so after every two lines of those I take a breath uh, and anyway what I'll do is I'll do the whole 108 in one sitting it doesn't take long I think it takes about uh, I can't remember it's something like it's like 11 12 minutes something like that it doesn't take too long and I was just doing that every day and the meaning of those two lines now my mother has so kindly put together she's handwritten this for me she's handwritten the Hanuman Chalisa which I now know by heart and she has written all of it in English as well and she's translated those lines to be all diseases and pain is eradicated brave Hanuman by continuous chanting of your name and that is just beautiful so if you would like to do this chant it's just 40 days and you just do those two lines 108 times as I say it takes about I'm pretty sure it's about 10 to 12 minutes it doesn't take too long and yeah it's a beautiful thing to do if you want a simpler chant there are simpler ones to do you could just do Ram 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 so you could just do Ram 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 that's that's a very simple Ram 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 Again and again and again and again. You're just chanting Ram's name. You could do Om Namah Shivai. So Om Namah Shivai, 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 Om Namah Shivai. Over and over again. Okay, that's calling Lord Shiva. He's brilliant to call for right now with the world um, chaotic the way that it is he's fantastic to us call for these days i personally have been doing my ganeshji lord ganeshji one so i've been doing and i do four in a row and then i take a breath so om gam ganapathiye namaha om gam ganapathiye namaha om gam ganapathiye namaha om gam ganapathiye namaha 
Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha and you go on and on it is so relaxing uh, I do about 15 it takes about 15 20 minutes to do the the count that I've got I'll tell you when I complete it I think in maybe two or three months I'll complete the set that I'm doing and I'll talk about it more then after I've completed it but it takes me about 15 20 minutes in the morning and it takes me about 15 20 minutes at night if you do it just before you sleep oh my goodness it sends you off into the most relaxing and beautiful sleep what I find is that chanting is it's a terrific way, it's a sort of hypnotic way of um, meditating. And if you've got a Moon-Mars connection in your chart, mantra chanting will be a terrific way of meditation for you because it's a bit physical, it's a bit vocal, it's got action in it, and it's really, really good. I, I have enjoyed just pure meditation as well. If any of you want to learn meditation, I've got a um, guide to meditation. I'll put a link or I'll put something above and I'll give you my code. Just type in OM FREE and you can download that free of charge. So I will put together a little tutorial about chanting as well. I'm going to do that as soon as I get some time. Me finding time somehow, I don't know, it's difficult. Uh, oh my gosh, I've already spent six minutes. Let's get into the topic for today. I have a really great question and I have been waiting for this question for the longest time. And one of you has asked and I thought, oh, this is so good because I've also been wanting to find the right opportunity to promote you as well. Now this question uh, comes from a very special viewer who over the course of gosh many years now I think uh, you know this incredible viewer has become my friend and this is Rena. I'm sure some of you would recognize Rena. she has been in the comments below and because I don't comment do comments and things like that I'm too busy doing so many things um, but Rena will sometimes hop in and she'll be so supportive to people and help people. She's been just doing that for so long and it's been so wonderful. And Rena has created and developed a very beautiful channel that is full of just wonderful art. It's like every video is an art piece. And in those videos, she draws, she's kind of teaching drawing techniques. It's inspiring and she also puts such great music to her videos and you know the way that she puts colors together and she shares her thought process as an artist and it's just so I love that channel I go there with a cup of tea or a hot chocolate when I need even just a five minute break and you know I know that I'll find something fresh new exciting relaxing I find it very relaxing to watch people paint or do craft work or something like that and that's the popularity of Bob Ross Bob Ross used to do those art videos and he would just paint and a lot of people would just watch them and kind of zone out because he's such a chilled out guy I mean he has some healing energy I bet if we look at his chart Oh, I want to look at his chart now. But I bet he's got some kind of, you know, strong Ketu or healing energy or there's something going on there. There'll be something really beautiful. Um, but yeah, I, Rena's channel has that same feel. I used to get that. What I used to get from Bob Ross videos, I get it from Rena's videos now. And it's so wonderful to see that channel flourish. So I'm going to put the information of Rena's channel by my side. Hopefully she'll do a comment on this um, video. I hope she's able to do a comment and if she watches it. And if Rena does do a comment, I'll pin her comment so that all of you will be able to just click on her and go to that channel and watch it and subscribe. Help that channel grow. It's really, really brilliant. And she's asked the question, the idea of bring our energy back to us you know is there any YouTube clips that relate to this you know can anyone can anyone tell me and yeah I, I, I will definitely uh, step up on this one and say I'll, I'll make a video about 
the concept of take your power back. And it's such a big, big concept. And every time I go through the ninth house on one of my transit videos, and when I'm in that ninth house, I'm always coming up with some kind of message that says, take your power back. But what does that mean? And I've been wondering, is anyone going to ask that question? And I think a lot of you know what I mean when I say take your power back. But I've, I've been thinking someone's definitely going to ask that. And I, I've always known someone, someone's going to ask the question. And here it is. So I'm really glad because it gives me a chance to flesh it out and to explain what I mean. And to explain what I mean with some examples. So let's take a look. I've got my iPad here and I'll do some drawing. I was just doing some practice drawing. I'll just scribble all of that out. Uh, what do I want to take a look at? So I want to take a look at the ninth house. All right, so we've got the ninth house here in the North Indian chart. And when we go through that ninth house, what is the ninth house? What does it represent? All right, so the ninth house, to me, that's really where I see, well, there's so many things. Okay, but I'm going to pick out just a couple for this particular video. So the first thing I'm going to say is father energy. Okay, this is the place of the father. Now it's perfectly fine if you see father in the 10th house. You can see father in the 9th and the 10th house. Or you can, if you want to just look at the 9th house as father, you can do that too. Or if you want to just look at the 10th house as father, you can do that too. I, I'm not fixed on this but me I always father is ninth house okay that's really where I see father energy uh, so we've got now why is the tenth okay for father as well well we've got the fourth right which is mother okay so fourth mothering energy mother's energy is there in the fourth and seven places away is her husband which is father right so seven places away is the 10th house. So it's perfectly fine. You can see 10th house as father as well. But in this example, what I'm going to talk about here, we're going to look at the 9th as being father. All right. Uh, and if you read the books of B.B. Raman, you'll see that I'm pretty sure B.B. Raman's quite big on father being 9th house as well. Now, father is the 9th house. So what do we have here in the ninth? We've got father. What else is father? Father is authority. Okay, so authority is here. We've also got fire energy here. And what is fi fire energy? Fire energy is where you are seen. So being seen, being a leader, there's leadership energy here. But as part of that, fire energy is also opinion. All right, so people's opinions are here too. Now the ninth is very interesting because this is the first place where we've got collective group energies. Okay, now the seventh is the house of the other and, and the seventh can be public and fame as well. So that can be masses and groups there too. I, I do realize that, yes. But when we're looking at the zodiac is like the hero's journey going from the first and when you go all the way through you do have say for example the other in the seventh but that is typically very often one other and it's typically your spouse as well the seventh then we move through the eighth where to me the eighth is you've got in-laws and things like that so yes we're getting we're touching more people here but it's still not uh, the world, if you know what I mean. So the first time we interact with the world and collective energies is really here in the ninth. So we've got opinions and we've got the world. We've got other people. So when I say take your power back, that's a really important thing of take your power back from where you've invested it in the past. And where we've invested it in the past is typically around getting approval from the outside world. Okay, now who, who are the first 
places where you seek to get approval from. It's your parents. That's the first place where you want to get approval. You want your mum to approve of you. You want your dad to approve of you. Okay. Um, and this kind of thing can and will be tested as you grow, as you age, you will be tested on this. Let's say, for example, you want to marry someone who your parents, they don't want you to marry, right? That's one of the first tests of you finding your own inner power, finding your own opinion, finding your leadership, your strength. That's, a, that's an early test of taking your power back. If your parents don't want you, they don't approve of your choice of partner, okay, you'll be tested on um, do, you, do you drop what you think and just follow what your parents believe or do you fight for what you believe? Okay, so that'll be a, a test there. And there are lots of tests that come from society as we age and as we go on in life. So what are some other examples of taking your power back? I'll give you a, a simple example. Let's say, and we'll just use me as a, and, and it's a fictional example. All right, this is pure fiction. So I'm just going to make something up. So let's say I go to a party and it's uh, an Indian Bollywood party and I'm there with all these aunties and uncles and of course in India all the aunties and uncles we refer to them but they might not be related to us and let's say I meet an auntie who's not at all related to me but she knows our family and we all know each other and it's all that kind of thing and she looks at me and she asks me so what are you doing and I say well you know, I, I do this work that I do. And she's like, she's really digging into this. She's like, yeah, what kind of work do you do? What kind of work do you do? And I say, well, I run a YouTube channel. Imagine, right? There are so many YouTube channels where young people make fun of, you know, the, the parents or the rellos, right? They all, they all judge you for running a YouTube channel. They're like, oh no, you've failed in life. You know, it's that judgment that comes from society, right? And let's say this auntie, she keeps digging. She's like, oh wow, she, oh no, she runs a YouTube channel. She's like, my children are doctors and engineers, but oh no, this one, oh no, she runs a YouTube channel. And then she asks, she says, well, all right, well, so, so are you married? No, I'm not married. She asks, do you have children? No, I don't have children. And now this is just blowing the mind of the auntie. She's just like, what on earth is going on here, right? And, and she throws me this look as if to say, gosh, you're a disappointment, right? Fictional situation. Thankfully, I don't have this in my life, right? I don't have people doing this. I'm very lucky. I, I, but I have had, do you know, I have had from, from other people uh, judgment. Oh, I, I have certainly had judgment. I've had judgment from friends. I've had judgment from old work colleagues. I've had, especially about what I do right now for a living. I've had quite a lot of judgment about that. I've had people throw me a look as if to say, gosh, you're a waste of space. You know, I've had that. I know what that feels like. Thankfully, it hasn't come from any family or anybody who might be watching this channel who knows me who I know okay so just <laughs> want to clarify that but um, yeah I mean I'm just bringing all of this up to show where a person's power is invested okay now the reason I don't get these tests is because my power is not externally invested in the opinions of other people I've taken my power back you bet I have I've taken my power back from loads of places and I have that power, right? So I define me. I define where I draw my happiness from. I know where I draw my happiness from. I draw my happiness from peace. Peace is my top state, being peaceful. That's my favorite thing. I, I get my happiness from peace. Peace for me is just the absolute top state. You know, and that's what happiness is to me as well. Happiness to me is not, it doesn't look like, for, for a lot of people, happiness looks like Tom Cruise jumping up, on, jumping up and down on Oprah's couch. 
you know that's what happiness is for some people or that's what they're looking for in life I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not looking for that you know I, I'm looking for where do I feel peaceful and where does my body experience health where do I feel healthy where do I feel healthy and peaceful and that's it that's what my idea of happiness is and because I know what my idea of happiness is and I know what makes me happy other people can have their opinion society can have its opinion of me and think that I'm a total failure or a total loser or whatever they want to think but it doesn't wobble me you see that because I've taken my power back so if my power was invested in their opinion this is all very ninth house right if my power was invested in their opinion then the aunties and uncles or whoever they are or whatever they are them giving me a greasy look saying wow looking at me going gee you're you're a waste of space or something like that right if they do that if my power is invested in their opinion I'm going to feel bad and I'm going to go oh I better I better quickly marry some dude and have a kid so that I don't have to face that feeling do you see that so this is what I mean by take your power back because if I care so much about the opinion of society then society has power over me but I don't want that I want to have power and be empowered so that society doesn't have power over me or that the experience of a certain feeling shouldn't have power over me this is why the Stoics say to people you should dress up in a funny costume and walk through the town that's a stoic idea because they don't want the feeling of humiliation to overpower you okay so if and a lot of people you will see this in life you will see how much energy and life force people invest into not wanting to feel a particular feeling you see so that it's amazing how a feeling can have a lot of power over a person over a person's life and their decisions and what they decide to do and and all that kind of stuff I, I tell you I had this with the whole me being an astrologer thing me leaving you know at least advertising advertising is not really a profession that you want to be proud of or talk about or you know oh yeah I work in advertising now it's, it's pretty bad as well but you know at least that was some corporate thing and I was doing that and it was kind of cool to talk about when people say what do you do for a living oh I work in advertising people accepted that people thought that was fine but now if I say and now I'm fine with saying I'm an astrologer or referring people to my YouTube channel or talking about what I do and it's because I don't judge myself that um, the outside world is now not judging me okay so that's how you know when you've taken your power back it really is when you've stopped judging yourself all right so that is key in this whole discussion as well and that, I mean, that's what I deserved observed when I was making the transition from advertising to what I do now and, and what, what I do now I was nervous about talking about it I'd sort of say well I'm an astrologer and it's kind of like oh gosh I hope you don't judge me you know but it's kind of like who's carrying the judgment it was actually me I was judging me they were just mirroring that back to me so taking your power back will involve you as I was saying taking your power back will involve you kind of not not minding like allowing people to have their opinion as well that's also another way that you know that you have taken your power back successfully because you allow them to have their opinion you allow them to judge you if they do if they want to that's their opinion they're allowed to have an opinion 
you know everybody should be free to have an opinion in your space you know and the more freedom you give other people to have whatever opinion they have the less they'll try to rattle you as well people can sense people can sense a powerful person they can sense a person that you know because everybody i do believe this everybody is psychic and street smart especially people who are not so intellectual very intellectual people yeah sometimes they might miss these things but most people are street smart most people are very good at uh, and Jerry Wise talks about this thing called pinging most people ping other people to just figure out okay can I rattle this one you know and the person who's taken their power back they can't be rattled you see and you know and that's why I, I don't mind if people ask me questions or if they ask me a personal question or whatever I, I answer because I'm happy with my life as it is I'm happy with what is you know uh, so what I observe with that is when when you're happy with yourself and the other person is free to have their opinion then you have successfully taken your power back and you're also not afraid to feel a feeling okay so you're not afraid of humiliation you're not afraid of the aunties and uncles in society giving you a greasy look you're not afraid you're not you're you're too busy content and being happy and being yourself you know and that that's what we need to do in this life i'm a big advocate for taking your power back take your power back from society there were other examples i had of this um one area where i have taken my power back, i realize i've got it's a long video but i'll just talk you through one more example and that was um taking my power back from the western medical system okay so this is ninth house right the western medical system it's a system of thought systems of thought live in the ninth house okay so pharmaceuticals and all this kind of thing you can also see pharmaceuticals in in lots of places especially when you're looking at nakshatras because very often that will be poisons the nakshatras that have poisons and things like that they're often you know pharmaceutical uh they have a pharmaceutical connection as well so i do see that but let's just say the pharmaceutical industry and western medical system here in the ninth house of man-made systems of thought so over a long period of time i've been extracting myself taking my power back from the western medical system now this has taken me a very 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 long time with a lot of work and a lot of reading of books and you know i've got a heritage here my father was a very good homeopath my mother is a degree qualified homeopath she studied for many years got an absolutely top-notch superb degree in this field so when it comes to natural and alternative health i've got parental heritage in that and experience and read lots of books and so please don't listen to my story and think oh brilliant i'll get off my prescription medicine no 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 don't do that it take it, it took me years to get off my prescription medications but i was on a lot of prescription medications across my teenage years and you know i would be inspired by stories of people who got off their drugs and they got themselves out of um chronic health problems and and this is all consciousness work this is all dr david hawkins letting go healing and recovery those two books very important and i've been doing this work so i've been doing this work to the point that so in my teenage in my teenage years i was on just daily medication steroids in order to be able to breathe um, and i got myself out of that and it took me many years i think when i look back it was really my first uh breath that i took in that's you know where i was totally healed from any asthmatic problems was when i was 25 so look at that it took about 10 years of solid work to get to that place and now it's taken more than 10 years to now get me to a place where 
you know, April 2022 was the last time I took a paracetamol. And I really feel like I've taken my power back from, uh, yeah, the Western pharmaceutical medical thing. I've, I've really taken my power back from all of that. I've taken my power out of that whole consciousness. If you look at uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton and his Biology of Belief book, and he wrote about the fact that when people go to the doctor's surgery, they start to feel better. So he was exploring the consciousness build of placebo and, and how that works. These things I have studied so much. I'm really into all this because I wanted to take my consciousness out of uh, needing the dependence on Western medical system and doctors and all that kind of thing. Now, I feel like I have zero of me, my energy, invested in there. I, I don't have any of it. I've taken it all back. I've taken my power all back. Okay, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't go in there again. Okay, if, if tomorrow I have, you know, a serious problem, Oh, you bet I'll go to the hospital or, you know, I would consult doctors and take anesthetics and drugs and whatever they prescribe. I, I would put myself in their hands. Of course I would, um, you know, but like, how do I use my creative free will? Well, I, I want to take my power back. Okay, so that is an area where I, I have taken my power back. But as I say, if I have to go back in there, I'll, I'll do that. I'm not, you know, uh, I, I'm still part of this world. I'm not, you know, I haven't taken my power totally back <laughs> from absolutely everything. I'm still, still here. I'll give you another example with the work that I'm doing. So I'm trying to take my power back from needing corporate jobs. And I haven't needed a corporate job now uh, since starting this YouTube channel. And I hope to continue that. I hope to keep doing this work. And I hope to keep serving the clients that come through this channel and this work that I'm doing. I love this work so much. And it, what it has shown me is it's shown me that I don't need a corporate job in order to pay for my life. So I've been taking my power back from the rat race. Okay, again, that's a very ninth house kind of a thing take my power back from there. I'll give you another example of something that I haven't done and I probably will never do, but people are doing this. People are taking their power back from the government. Okay, so again, we're looking at ninth house. So taking their power back from the government. So what do I mean by this? All right, there was a lady who, now I've forgotten her name. I wish I could find her name. I don't have her name. I'm so annoyed at myself, but I'll just tell you the story. I saw her being interviewed by a guy called Sasha Stone, and this was a long time ago, and anyway, she was being interviewed. What happened to her was she was put in jail unfairly, and she had all this time, and I think in the jail that she was in, I mean, it must have been a pretty amazing jail, but she had this library, and she started reading all these legal books. And she started figuring out everything about the build of the world. And she started figuring out things like that. Now, I don't know how all this stuff works, but uh, I think Santos Bonacci has done videos about this as well, where it's kind of like if you have a citizenship, there's like a trust in your name or something and you are being traded and like all this stuff that just blows my mind. I don't know how any of this works. But what this lady figured out is that if she becomes stateless and if she extracts herself from out, gets herself outside of the system, then, you know, her unlawful jailing all came to an end and, you know, she, she doesn't have to pay parking fines and she doesn't pay tax and I don't know, just all these rules that apply to everybody, they somehow now don't apply to her because she's figured out all this stuff and it's pretty amazing. And people are waking up to all these things and they're getting themselves out of these systems. And we're discovering our own sovereignty and we're discovering, and this is the payoff, this is the benefit of taking your power back. What do you get with all that power? You get freedom. That's the big thing. That is the big thing that you get. You get freedom. And that is how I feel. 
I feel free. I feel like, and this is why society doesn't test me very much. I have been tested in the past. I have received greasy looks and weird stares and funny comments. And I mean, just as, as soon as like a couple of years ago when I had lunch with a couple of friends and they said some odd things about, oh, what do you do for a living? And they weren't very supportive. I mean, you know, um, that that's their opinion and that's fine. But they're, you know, I, I don't particularly hang out with them uh, anymore. And, and what I'm finding is the more okay I am with me, the more accepting and non-judgmental I am of me, the more power I have. And with that power, the more freedom I have, the more peace I have, the happier I feel. And that's why whenever we touch that ninth house, I always encourage people to take their power back. Um, I hope I've explained this all right. I realize this is a long video and I hope it, it hasn't been too long for you. But I hope I've also given you a lot of examples about taking your power back from systems of thought, from governments. These are all ninth house activity. This is all related to authority, someone who's perceived as being above you. Okay. When you take your power back, you're flipping that table and you're, you're powerful. And, you, and, and with that power, you, you, won't mind, you won't be angry at the other people. That's also how you know you've taken your power back. You're not angry at the aunties and uncles and friends that are judging you or whatever it is. And that, by the way, I don't have any aunties and uncles in real life. My aunties and uncles in real life, they, I love them all and they, they love me. I know that. That's fine. But I'm just giving this example because I know in the Indian community, this happens a lot where, and not just Indian community, even in, gosh, I'm trying to think, what's that guy? I watch his um, comedy videos. They are so funny. And he's Malaysian and he's got all these videos. If I find him, I'll put him on the screen by my side. He's got so many videos about how parents just, you know, you could have a YouTube channel of several million followers but they the parents still treat you like you're a total loser because you're on YouTube <laughs> you know there are so many videos like that and the person this is also what I think I think if you've conquered your need for parental approval if you've taken your power back from parental approval wow you are powerful because that's the closest relationship that you have that's you know and that's I think that's the biggest addiction on earth it's not like what what do people talk about cocaine or coffee or I don't know what all the addictions are but like that they're addictions but addiction to parental approval that's the biggest one out there and if you've taken your power back from that one oh yeah, the world is yours so that's that's my little video here it hasn't been a little video it's been very long but those of you who've stayed and watched the whole thing i want to thank you so much and i do hope that this has been thought provoking and just a nice bit of distraction and just something to get you thinking about your spiritual development journey and where you are with this concept of taking your power back and you can see here with me you know I'm doing the work of taking my power back and I have taken my power back from lots of places but there are journeys I'm yet to do I may not do I don't think I'm going to do this stateless thing and all that you know and not pay parking tickets I mean I haven't even got a car you know so I'm still on the journey of wanting to get a car and be normal so <laughs> you know I'm not I'm not in that in the place of taking that much power back but uh, I've certainly taken, wherever I have been able to take power back, I have done that. And I do recommend it. But yeah, I mean, in some areas you may not want to, you know. In some areas, you, you know, and so, some people I watch some YouTube channels, like I've been watching Mia Maples these days. Wow, look at that. She's, you know, she's, yeah, she, she doesn't want to take her power back from her parents. They're right on board helping her and it's, that's a whole different thing. But some people, you don't have to do that uh, journey, you know, but some, some people will. It's different for everyone. 
anyway guys I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time Thank you.